Hi guys, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. This one is perfect for beginners. Lots of helpful tips and tricks. So this background, I had pieces of napkin left over from when I made that page. And they were just little bits. And so instead of trying to keep track of them, I just glued them down onto a page. And you know, that was a couple months ago. So it sat on my desk and today it's a gray day and I just want some bright colors and I grab this page. Not sure where this is going to go, have no definitive idea, but I am going to start off by taping off this straight edge here. Now this is from my Canson Mixed Media 9 by 12 art journal but I've taken it off I've taken it off the coil to make it easier to do the page and that's what you're seeing now it will lay flat I don't have to worry about getting product or anything on any other pages I've never done this before with the cans of mixed media I'm really liking the process of working on a flat surface and not having to worry about the bulk but we'll see how it goes when it comes time to put it all together. So this is a Stamperia stamp and it's left swirl. There's a left and a right and you can get both of those in any napkins. There's a link in the description box below. She has lots of stamps and TCW stencils as well as napkins. So check it out. She ships internationally. And I'm just stamping with my black archival ink. I want some pattern here. And like I said, I don't know where I want to go. But I like the idea of contrast. And I'm a huge fan of swirls. So that's why I got this stamp. It's a good basic. Looking at these bright colors, I decide to take my inspiration from the colors. So I grab the yellow, the magenta, the blue, turquoise that I see there, and purple. And you see them in little tubs, and the reason for that is that I was at the end of my tubes, and so I cut them open and I scraped out all that paint because there's always a lot. And I just put it in these um, either Dollar Tree plastic cups or these condiment cups that I bought at restaurant supply store. So my goal here is to just get color down. Here I'm trying to remove paint through the stencil. I don't like how that's looking. So I'm just going back to my other plan and I'm just mixing paint on the page. The purple and pink work good, good together. Pink and blue go together. The only color combo that I really have to watch is mixing the purple with the yellow. That's going to give me kind of a brownish color. And when that happened, and it did, I just took a baby wipe, wiped that off, and then let it dry and reapplied paint on top of it. Um, no biggie. And over time, you're going to learn, the more you play with colors, the more you're going to learn which colors mix and make you something that you love, and which ones don't. And if they don't, then you just put another color in between. So in between the yellow and the purple, I could put pink. I could put blue because they will work well with both of those colors. Kind of make a color bridge between. So I am just mixing it. This is Color Therapy 101. Gray day. I just need to create. I've been busy doing other things and I just need to get painty. I'm pulling back some of the paint with the baby wipe if I'm covering up too much. I'm loving that swirl and I don't want to cover it up. It's You do see a little bit of it in the end, but not as much as I want it. At this point, I'm thinking, oh, I can always come back later and stamp with black acrylic paint to make some more swirls that are more upfront and in the finished product. Where this page ended up going, I didn't do that because it didn't fit. I'm just mixing. 
it's getting too blendy, stop, let it dry, and keep going. And I'm turning the page. At this point, I don't know which way is going to be, what orientation I'm going to use. And that's okay. You need to start, you need to go. So the advantage of starting with a page that already had, I had all those napkin stuff on it. You're not going to see a lot of the napkins there, but it did give me the colors and it did give me some of the motifs that for where I took this page. So this stencil is called Stained Glass. It's the first time I'm using it. And I'm just using white acrylic paint with a makeup sponge. Don't get too much on your sponge. It should not look wet and globby. I just want some white. And quite often when I start layering up those stencils to get a lot of visual interest and texture, I often put Pick a stencil that has pretty wide open spaces like this one, and I do white. It kind of melds the background and starts to give me focus and gives me a good base if I'm going to do a lot of stenciling, which is my plan, with other colors, because I'm going to go on top of that white. Now, typically when you are setting up your page, try to stick to odd numbers threes, fives, it's just, for whatever reason, more pleasing to the eye. So I'm putting some of these half off the page, one is almost completely on the page, and I like that variation. And I'm absolutely loving it as it is. I, I could have stopped here. Now I was going to come in with this stencil, and this one's called Leaf Emblem. But then I decide I'm going to stencil with some of the colors that I have in the background, but just this center flower motif. So you see, the napkin that I had underneath had those flowers. So I picked the colors from that, it guided my color choices, and it's guiding the motif and patterns that I'm choosing. And when I'm choosing different stencils, I tend to two stencils that have some common ground, like this floral motif, like roundness, or it could have been diamond shapes. I like things that work cohesively. So here I'm coming in with the turquoise, and I'm putting that, and I'm going right over top of the white, I'm going right on top of the colors, and I'm liking that look. My goal, color, layers of color, pattern, texture. Now, even though you're not really going to see that napkin, it did give some wonderful textural element to the page. And that's not something that you as the viewers can see. But it took paint a little differently than just the flat page. So now I'm coming back with again this floral or leaf emblem and I'm doing the center but I'm using the medium magenta here. And I'm not going for perfect stenciling. Someone asked me how do you get it so perfect? It's not. It just looks perfect because you're seeing it as an observer not as the maker. And when it's a background I'm not going to be so precise. If I was doing this as more of a, a focal image, I would be a little more particular. But, you know, over time, I've learned to kind of let go of that perfectionism. Now I grabbed this ethereal stencil and I wanted a smaller element, but still floral. So I'm grabbing that side part of it. This ethereal stencil has these three different patterns on it, the words, the star, and then this floral one. And I use each of them a lot. So it's like getting three stencils in one. So I'm putting some white on there and then I want, I'm remembering back to when I put the black stamping, I really like that contrast. So I'm reaching and I'm grabbing my black acrylic paint, it's at the end of its life, and I'm just going to come back and 
put that on. Always a little nervous about putting black on, but everything underneath is acrylic paint. So worst case scenario, I can come back, take a baby wipe and get rid of it. If everything is dry underneath, because it's acrylic, it's permanent. And I'm just loving that contrast that the black makes. So I have all these really bright colors and then I'm adding contrast with the white and with the black. Now at this point, I have no idea still where I'm going with the focal image. I am just enjoying the process. I'm doing some color therapy. I'm having fun with my stencils. And I know that if I don't have an idea of where it can go, I can park this background until I do. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't feel the pressure of doing it all in one sitting. And quite often I'll time it and it's like, okay, now it's I'll go have lunch or I'll go do some gardening and then I come back. I'll also often take a picture of it and just let it gel. And again, the more you do, the smoother that process is. Uh, but sometimes real, realistically and honestly, it's a struggle for me as well. But you don't see everything. You see this on a nice small thing. Now I'm absolutely loving this bright, colorful background. And I'm edging it. I've got black paint on my makeup sponge. So I'm just kind of edging it around there to frame the page. Often I do this when I'm thinking, what do I want to do for a focal limit? And as I'm doing that, I'm looking around on my desk. Do I have any little bits here and there? You know, at, at different times I have ideas and I pull things out and there may be the makings of, um, or many, many ideas scattered around my studio. Now, because I have that straight edge there, I can't really use the makeup sponge, so I'm using the floating acrylic technique and just adding a little bit more shading. I'm really liking how the black works, but I want more. Now, if you can't do the floating acrylic technique, and there is a video that teaches that, and it's a great one to practice and learn because you'll get so much use out of it, but you could take a Stabilo All Pencil, go around it, a charcoal pencil, and go around it, watercolor, ink tense block, all of those things. Most of what I've listed, other than the ink tense block, they are not permanent. So you have to be careful if you're gluing stuff down or you're putting any wet medium on it. So after lunch, I decided, and you can see the light has, has shifted a little bit so it's a little dull I think I turn on the light after a while and I decided that I am going to put these Tim Holtz cats that I have I had stamped out because when I stamp out I stamp out a lot so I have them ready in my stash so I cut them out and there's five keep it to an odd number I arrange them in keeping with where I'm putting the sentiment and in keeping of the white that I stenciled with the one um, with the stained glass Mandela stencil. I'm using matte medium to glue this down. Now the sentiment that I have here says, when women get to a certain age, they start collecting lots of cats. This is call, called many paws. And I just, when I saw that quote, I loved it. And that's why I included in my pet talk sentiment pack. And if you're interested in seeing what all the sentiments that are in my pet talk sentiment pack there is a link in the description box and it's available for digital download at Minnie's napkins and you can go there and you can see all of them I think there are there's I'm thinking 48 different sentiments and I have them white background with black letters and black background with white letters and I opted to do the black here because I'm going to keep these cats white. You wanted to paint them, you absolutely could. 
but I have so much going on in the background and the color, and I'm loving it. I don't want to. Here I'm showing, I'm kind of putting it, balancing it with where that Mandela stenciling is. Now, you know, when you have a lot of wood gesso or paint in the brush, take a paper towel, wipe off the excess before you throw it in the water. And then, you know, it just gets rid of it in a better way. Now, I want these cats to stand out a little bit more from the background, especially since I'm not colorizing them. So I am using the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush. And again, I if you hit the eye in the top right hand corner, I will put that video, floating acrylic or shading video, there for you. And hopefully you can see the difference that this makes. It just is going to make the elements that I want to be the most forward, to catch your eye the first, make that happen. And one of the things that I've learned is you need to put pressure on that brush. You, that's something, again, you can't tell from the video. But I, when I press, I get that nice dark. I also shade on different parts of the cat following the lines that the maker created. And you can see from one to the other the difference that it makes. Now, again, if you don't or can't do this process yet, you can outline it with the Stabilo All Pencil and activate that with a small brush and get this a similar shading effect. Or use a charcoal pencil as well. There's lots of ways to shade and, and do the one that works best for you. And at this stage, it's pretty much done. I'm not gluing anything on. So using the Stabilo All Pencil or Charcoal Pencil, I'm not going to mess it up by what's coming. So the closer you are to the end, the safer that becomes. So here I'm just shading on the lines of the cat. Just, give, just adding a little bit of detail. Having a page that was already started was a, is a great way to jumpstart your creative time. A lot of people say, oh, well, I don't know where to start. Well, when you have that, you're, you don't have that blank page. And if you do have a blank page, grab something, anything. Magazine papers, rip them and put them on. Collage papers, leftover paint papers. Put some color down. Uh, start stamping, stencil something, and as you go through that process, at some point things kind of gel and fall together and then you get a direction, you, you get an idea. So all told, this for me, with the background already started, with the, the you know the napkin on there, took 40 minutes plus the time that it took for me to cut out the cats because I did that all. Um, they were already stamped. Like I said, I have them in my stash and I recommend doing that because that saves time in the creative process. It's one less thing you can do, you have to do in that one session. So it makes it more, doable to get down and get done a page in that shorter time because realistically we don't all have three hours to sit there and create just adding more here and i'm looking at the cats and i'm going and i'm saying you know is there enough shading and i'm adding a little bit 
once it's dry. And when it when you're using this technique of floating acrylic, you definitely need to be doing that. So, you know, I wanted some more detail, but I really didn't have, I didn't want to put script and I don't have anything that's that fine. And I didn't want to take away from the cat. So splattering. So I'm splattering with black. And splattering is a good way to bring the whole page together. I'm loving these bright, bright, bright colors. And then I'm going to splatter with white. This time when I reached, I did actually grab my fan brush, which is what I usually use. But you can use any brush. And then once you've splattered, you need to get out the heat tool or let it dry. And I did that in between. Now I'm going to add some detail to the black. I want it to stand out the sentiment a little bit more. So I grabbed my fine line applicator. Now in here, I have a mixture of white acrylic paint, Liquitex Basics, and water. There is no recipe. And you do not need to fill the entire container because a little goes a long way. I put paint and then add a little bit of water, test it out, add a little bit more, shake it up and stuff. So when it's sat for a while, I really give it a good shake. I test the flow off to the side, never on your page. I'm going to save that painter's tape to tape off another edge perfectly fine. Now the faster I go, the thinner it's going to be. If I want it thicker, I need to go slower. And I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on this. My hands, especially with the hand surgery that I've had, you know, there's not a lot of strength and they get tired easily, but these fine, fine line applicators uh, don't cause me any grief in that regard. And always, always, always turn the page to make it however, what's easiest for you. If you don't subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button. If you are a subscriber and you're not getting notifications, click on the bell, check to see what your setting is. And if you're not getting notifications and it's set, unsubscribe, but then resubscribe. And then select the notifications. There's a glitch with YouTube. I, I, a lot of people have been complaining that they are not getting my notifications. But I do put out two to three, sometimes four videos a week. So come back and check. I absolutely love this page. I hope you love it too. Here are some close-ups of the page. Check the description box for any other details you may be looking for. Leave a comment, ask a question, share this with your creative friends. Now let's get creative.